Madam Stockton? Present. Benton? Here. Kirkman? Here. Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. Salvo? Present. Jesus? Here. Maggione? Here. Hines? Here. Hemnes? Here. Pulisic? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Kaju? Here. Briskevich? Here. Sullivan? Here. Vero? Here. Fresh? Here. 21 Fresh. The carry explained both the legislators how to work the uh, push the button to the right. You want to see? Push it down. Or no. Okay, well, we made it here finally. Beautiful facility. Great um, time. Yeah, pardon me, right? Great time. Uh, I'd like to welcome a few in the audience. I see uh, I see former county exec Lou Heinbach out there. The Williams. <laughs> Our former chairman of the legislature, Mike Pilhunter. December 20th, 2017. At the start of winter, citizens gather for an unveiling, a reopening of a grand artistic creation, Paul Rudolph's plan, now 50 years since its original completion. How many have walked through this strange building since it first opened? How many stood silent, impressed with Rudolph's dream, or distressed, standing in line at the DMV? For those who complained, some were impressed with the modern corridors, unusual rooms, this labyrinth at the end of a village, rich in tales of old families and newly arrived alike. It may not have the grand history of the racetrack, Lawyer's Row, the Orange Inn, or, churches, or the church's clock tower, but the government center housed many careers, many hats worn in the last century, countless voices and noble ideas. Thank you all. Um, 
in that period, but they, but they admire the modern design and, and the fact that Orange County has such a uh, variety of architecture that spans from the very early stone houses to, the, to this, this building now. Um, so just for your own information, it is now 47 years since the original dedication of this building. It opened, the, the legislature at the time met here December 11th of 1970 to have this event. Um, so we're in, that, in those footsteps. Um, but just a little bit of background. When you go back into the county records, Paul Rudolph's name first appears in 1963. So as far back as 1963, the uh, Board of Supervisors were trying to figure out how they were going to expand county government. They were in the 1887 building. They were dealing with very small departments, but they knew that um, they had to face bigger issues, especially the growth of social services, um, and they needed to transition from having a Board of Supervisors to a legislature. So that took place over the course of the 60s, while simultaneously they were bringing in architects to build um, the building. So it was a small group, a building uh, supervisory committee that brought in Paul Rudolph, they interviewed him, they liked his design, and they allocated $4.6 million to the project. But unfortunately what happened is that as the, as the years wore on, the project grew and grew, and it um, expanded so much by 1970 that there was a lot of bitterness over the cost of the building. And it was really due to the fact that there was a changing of leadership happening simultaneously. So when the building opened, unfortunately, it was already having foundation problems and cement problems. And they had to um, bring legal action against the contractors who had built the building. So for five years, the um, employees here had to cover up the holes with tarps and leave it as it was in order for um, this case to be looked at appropriately. And it's over that five years that the building started to deteriorate. So unfortunately, by the time the lawsuit is over in 1975, the building needed a lot of work, and there was bitterness over the ballooning cost and over the fact that it couldn't be repaired during that time. And that's when this narrative started of negativity towards Paul Rudolph and towards the building. Um, and that's something that I think we've come full circle around to now, that um, now that we've had contractors in and they've addressed all of these issues that today, um, we can appreciate the beauty of Paul Rudolph's design without having to deal with the inconvenience of all of the construction that they, that they dealt with in the 70s and 80s. So if you'd like to know more about this, uh, the dates and some of the numbers, there's a handout in the back and you can take that. Thank you. Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, Vesalvo, Ekis, Fagione, 
Hines, Hemnitz, Pulisic, O'Donnell, Padoue, Briskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Gresham. 21 ayes. Okay, number four. Legislator Benning. Resolution approving the completed tax rolls of the several towns and cities and directing the execution and delivery of warrants for the collection of taxes extended thereon, pursuant to section 904 of the Real Property Tax Law. Thank you. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Hamel? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Bergman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Spagio? <coughs> Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisak, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 ayes. Number five. Legislators Turnbull, Fagion, Paduk, and Bed. Resolution authorizing a contract to be made between the County of Orange, the Orange County District Attorney's Office, and the Orange County District Attorney's Criminal Investigators Association, Inc. in relation to terms and conditions of employment, pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Second. Discussion. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amel? <coughs> Anastakis? Benton? <coughs> Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Hemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Padoue? Briskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Gresham. 21 ayes. Number six. Legislators Fagione, Benton, Ekis, and Hines. An act to establish a new salary schedule there and applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the Orange County District Attorney's Criminal Investigators Association. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Honest, right? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amel? Yes. Anagostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Pulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan, Vera, Russia. 21 eyes. Number seven. Legislators Cheney, Ekis, Turnbull, and Benton. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature supporting and authorizing Orange County Community College to offer a one time voluntary retirement incentive agreement between the college and both the Faculty Association of Orange County Community College and Orange County Community College Staff and Chair Association. Second. Discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cool microphone. Uh, as many of you know, I uh, have been an adjunct at Orange County Community College at SUNY Orange on and off a number of years, and I'm scheduled to teach a class uh, if the enrollment holds up. So rather than uh, put myself in a position of potential conflict or being viewed as a conflict, I'm just not going to abstain on this phone. Okay, was the legislator on? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the first time in about 10 years of county government service, this is the first time I saw a uh, resolution come before the legislature without the county exec signing off on it. So the county exec even refused to sign off on this request. 75% uh, uh, buyout, in my estimation, is exorbitant. Other county employees got $15,000 uh, $15, max. <coughs> Uh, this proposal should have been done during the budget process and definitely prior to all of our elections. So I give the college credit for uh, waiting until after the elections to put this through. Uh, the college was asked uh, after their first presentation to tweak their original proposal. Uh, the new proposal that they uh, brought back still costs the same amount of money and more than likely will be used up at the 75% exorbitant rate. Uh, three of us, maybe more, but myself, Legislator Benton, and Legislator Hines, recommended different uh, requests and changes. All of them were ignored. So for that reason, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Uh, Minority Leader Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think if I viewed this plan from a distance, I might have a different opinion, but after a long extended meeting with the president and uh, her person that designed this plan, I walked away believing that it was the best possible plan possible, that they had done their homework and uh, they designed this plan to achieve the desired <coughs> results. Uh, the alternative is unthinkable. That worked hard over there to uh, deal with some pretty serious, serious fiscal problems, and I think 
uh, we have to lend a little bit of trust in the situation. And I'll be voting uh, yes for this today. Legislator Russ Kevich. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I've uh, had many discussions uh, with Dr. Young and uh, some of the trustees. Uh, this is not something uh, you know they came up with overnight. They've been uh, put a lot of work into it, a lot of hours, many meetings, and they've come up with a plan which they feel works best for the college. Um, they've got approval of the board of trustees. They have approval of their faculty and staff. And uh, I think this is something uh, in light of the uh, enrollment issue. This is something that they need to do. Uh, they came before committees a few months in a row. Um, after the first month, they did come back. They did make changes. Uh, they did take a lot of our suggestions. I think some of those uh, they addressed um, with this agreement, and some of those I think they're going to be uh, taking into consideration as they move forward with their contract negotiations in the future. Um, I would like to say uh, if they do not do this, uh, they're going to have to be looking at uh, layoffs. And if they do, turn to layoffs, they're going to be laying off some of the younger, newer faculty who they've worked hard to hire to um, move forward with the programs that they need to attract new students and uh, correct the enrollment situation. So as I see it, it's something that we need to do and it's something I would uh, urge everybody to vote for. Thank you. Legislator Dagan Stocks, then Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was not part of the committee where Mr. O'Donnell mentioned people came up with uh, alternative suggestions. Um, however, I did get a chance to communicate back and forth uh, with, uh, with the president of the college. Um, and, I, and I saw one graph in that communication, in that presentation that she made, that showed the, uh, the number of uh, students graduating in the next about 12 years will be going down 22%. So college is a business. Imagine if your business was going to have 22% less potential customers 12 years from now. You had better start taking action today, otherwise your business would be out of business in 12 years. And so I don't know if this is the best number, the 75%. I don't know if that's the optimal number or not. What I do know is that the college and the board of trustees have come up with a plan to start to reduce the costs. Um, that has to occur. Um, it's their money. It's their plan, it's their college, and I'm willing to give them an opportunity to move forward with changes that are going to improve the situation. Otherwise, over the future, we would be in much dire consequences if we didn't do anything at this point. So I will be, I will be supporting their plan to restructure and move their college forward. Thank you. Thank you. So th this plan does not solve the enrollment problem. As the graph shows, the enrollment is going down for the next 10 years. This plan of spending a million dollars for 10 professors to retire early does not do anything to solve the enrollment problem. And the threat of layoffs is just that, a threat. There's money there, more than a million dollars, that could be spent to not do this plan and go back to the table, rethink it, wait a year, negotiate with the unions, and come up with a plan that is fair to our taxpayers. Thank you. Legislator Kevin. Speaking from uh, experience running a school district and understanding exactly where the problem is here, this plan is absolutely viable because when you have young teachers being trained, you can bring in new courses and they're more amenable to having them be a success. Uh, Unfortunately, it costs a lot of money, but in order for the college to succeed and indeed to grow in the future, you have to bring in new courses. This is one way to do it, and I am absolutely voting yes. Okay, Legislator Dyke Stockis. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, sorry, I missed one point that I uh, should have made earlier. Um, when we were in dire straits five or eight years ago, um, we as legislators, I led the effort, and a lot of the other legislators led the effort also to freeze salaries for elected officials. In my talks with the college president, I was very happy to learn that management positions there have froze their salaries. That shows me that the leadership there understands that they're all in on this and moving forward trying to solve the problem. I uh, commend them for doing that, and again, I will be supporting this plan. Thank you. Legislator Sullivan. 
I, um, I just want to say that I've worked on many um, retirement incentives in the county level as well as in the school district. And um, one of the things that you see here that you haven't seen on the county level is a cap on you know what the payout will be. And that cap should really um, put aside any fear of, of overpayment that you have. Um, and, and it helps us to come to a decision to help the college take care of their fiscal uh, issues. And so I'm going, to be, I'm going to be voting yes today. And I, I want you all to consider that. But there is a cap here. You're not going to be spending more than $1 million. Okay. Are you ready for roll call? So it's a problem that will be fixed, uh, I guess, once this new board is seated. Uh, they uh, really want local governance, and that's what the legislative resolution of 1991 called for. So the best thing to do is to have a blank and sit down with the uh, individuals I have offered to attend. I'm sure uh, Legislator Benelli and Legislator Stiganga will also be willing to attend since it's in their district. And really go through this, fix the bylaws uh, for everybody so that it works for them. This is one of the unique uh, Things we have in the county where the local, I mean, uh, the local uh, citizens kind of get to manage their own money, uh, but we vote on it. But at least we get input from them, unlike uh, in other special districts. Uh, so I think uh, this will fix it. It'll clear up some issues. Uh, there was no uh, malice in any of this. I'm, I'm positive of that from speaking with the board members. The, the bylaws were just clearly not specific and even the county attorney pointed that out that there's uh, if this happens you can do that but maybe you can do that and it just those are the things we have to clear up so this will fix the issue for today and then this will be back in front of us to fix the bylaws after it's negotiated through with the county attorney's office so i'd ask everybody to please support this today okay roll call thank you mr chairman uh, mr Hines referred to other other agencies or institutions that the county operates without the approval or advice of the local folks, which is uh, not as good an idea as this one if this gets straightened out. Uh, and I hope that uh, in the upcoming years that uh, not only the Department of Law but the legislature will look at the Orange County Sewer District number one in order to have an advisory board that can vote and then make their recommendations to this body. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? 
Yes. Anakistakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia. 21 eyes. Legislators Turnbull and Benton, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works to amend resolution number 285 of 2012 to include a supplemental finding statement. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Yes. Turnbull. Yes. Bulo. Yes. Anakistakis. Benton. Berkman. Benelli. Cheney. Dillard. DeSalvo. Ekis. Fagione. Hines. Chemnitz. Kulisek. O'Donnell. Paduk. Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number 11. Legislators Benelli, Turnbull, Benton, and Hines. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the acquisition of a parcel of real property situated in the town of Bloomington Grove, County of Orange, State of New York, in connection with a project known as Beaver Dam Lake Rehabilitation. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anakistakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. Number 12. Legislators Paduk, Benelli, Benton, and O'Donnell. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Executive on behalf of the Orange County Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with the New York State Thruway Authority. Second. Discussion. Yes, Andy. Is Cheney added? Can you add DeSalvo added? Early added. Uh, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Fresh. 21 eyes. Number 13. Legislators Anagnostakis, Chemnitz, and Benton. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Social Services pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Thank you. Discussion. Legislator next slide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so what we're doing here, just so everybody's uh, clear on this, we're uh, appropriating money for the Department of Social Services to have their half of the IGT money uh, that is required to be put in uh, they'll be putting in the $2,325,094. Um, and 25 cents, I think that first paragraph is missing the 25 cents. <laughs> so, thank you. And, uh, and that will allow, that will allow the, uh, that will allow Valley View to, re to recoup twice that amount in IGT payments. Um, so, so that 2.3 million is county taxation, as uh, some of us uh, like to point out. That does go to Valley View. But in the last uh, three years or so, the turnaround at Valley View has been tremendous. It is now not costing taxpayers any money, and basically that county taxation is being given by the Department of Social Services is being pocketed or banked by Valley View. It's transferred from one entity to another, and that uh, is one major reason. That, uh, I want to thank Mr. Benton. Uh, he worked with me, and uh, we had Commissioner Havlaw present in a joint committee uh, findings of what the actual cash that is sitting in the account that Valley View controls that no one wanted to acknowledge over the last three years was there. And now we know for a fact, as of December 3rd, Valley View has $47.1 million of cash. So it is not costing taxpayers any money. It is providing great service to our seniors. It is employing people at a good living wage, and uh, it is banking money and has 47.1 million. I don't know what to call that, but win, win, win across the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, uh, let's start first. Thank you. Uh, I would like to have my name added, first of all. And second of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Anastakis and Mr. Benton for the, the leadership in the recent meetings and making the uh, discoveries of which money is in which account which is a bit complicated, but it was good work. I'm, I'm pleased that, uh, the t that the turnaround of Valley View, and I certainly hope uh, in the upcoming year that everybody supports Valley View rather than try to sell it. Okay, let's start with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Nagnostakis for working with him and noting 
that it is actually our matching funds, our county taxation. But I'd also like to make the point that every legislator going forward now will know of that uh, term in the uh, audit of the Valley View Nursing Home, that, that one uh, where it talks about the monies due from general fund. Everybody now knows that that is like the cash account, bank account, checkbook amount, and is no longer up in the air as to what it is, where it is, and how much it is. Okay, Legislator O'Donnell and Legislator Sullivan. Okay, thank you. I also want to add that uh, Legislator Sullivan and Legislator Amo brought this uh, to the forefront and asked for the bank accounts to be uh, brought to the full legislature. I was glad I was able to add to it with uh, telling you that the enterprise fund was not a separate fund, but was the actual account of value. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Sullivan. I, I just want to say um, that I'm, I'm really proud of my efforts and, and the efforts of um, many of the legislators who were here today, um, or not, some of them are not here, but we as a group fought really hard um, to save the, this county very valuable county service, which is otherwise known as the gem of Orange County. And I would like to um, urge all of the new legislators as well as the sitting legislators to please do your <coughs> best to secure this service for our, um, for our residents in the future. The residents who live there now are very concerned. And at their age, they really don't need to be concerned about where they're going to be living in the next year or who is going to be taking care of them. So as a last effort, I would like to um, please urge you all to take, take my words to heart and remember that you are dealing with real people. It's not just a business. Thank you. Um, there's a book out there called Boy Valley View is sent to Orange County. It's the history of it from 1831 up to uh, 2012, if anybody's interested in it. Okay. Roll call. Early. Yes. Adam. Roll call. Bonson? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nathanakis? <laughs> Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Diller? DeSalvo? Ekis, Baggio, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduke, Piscavage, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislative bond second cabinet. This resolution authorizing the Orange County Executive on behalf of the Orange County Office for the Aging to enter into an intermunicipal agreement between the County of Orange and the Town of Deer Park pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 1190. Second. Legislator Baggio. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like my name be added to this resolution, please. And I'd also like to note and give special thanks to uh, Town Clerk Flo Santini and the Town of Deer Park Supervisor Gary Spears. Their efforts to bring this program to the Town of Deer Park are very much appreciated, not just for the residents of the Town of Deer Park, but for the surrounding <coughs> communities as well, including the city of Port Jervis. And the dining, uh, the dining program and the attendance on Mondays and Thursdays are most notable. You drive by the Senior Center on, in, on Route 209 in Deer Park on Mondays and Thursdays, and you'll know that there are a lot of seniors that are enjoying the programming. So thank you, Chairman. Legislator Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think it's a great program, and also number 15, we're going to talk about it. But in context of our discussion of Valley View, we must also give credit to Andrew Maglione and the Office of the Aging of these programs, because their first and primary goal is to help people stay out of nursing homes by staying at home and having the services they need, which is, we all know, the best way to age in place is to be in your own home and not an institution. As good as Valley View is, as good as any nursing home is, the best place to be is home, and this is helping you. Thank you, Mr. Much later, you can just say anything. Okay, but uh, Minority Leader Trump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, the legislature should be really proud of this program. It just does so much good. As I said in the committee, I'd like to repeat here. When you get to be my age, every meal is a happy meal. Bonnison? <laughs> 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 yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amy Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSavo? Ekis? Fagio? 
Himes, Temnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Suskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gretchen. 21 ayes. Okay, Legislators in Agnes Turnbull, Benelli. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Executive on behalf of the Orange County Office of the Aging to enter into an intermunicipal agreement between the County of Orange and the Town of Looming Grove, the Village of Greenwood Lane, the Village of Montgomery, and the Town of Warwick, pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 1190. Second. Discussion. Thanks. Nika Sadek, Jimmy Adams, Kevin Chad, Dillard, and the Duke. Roll call. Anasa? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Bertman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Pulisek? O'Donnell? Badu? Briskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Fresh. 21 eyes. And number 16. Legislators Ikes and Badu. Resolution authorizes the county executive to accept a certain gift on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Thank you, Joe. Um, the donor wishes to remain anonymous. We don't know who it is, uh, but there certainly deserves a very large thank you to whoever that person is out there supporting the county, and specifically in this case, the county sheriff's office. Very good. Okay, roll call. Yes. Turnbull? Yes. 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 Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padua, Briskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. <coughs> All Republicans are after that last resolution. Number 16. Look around a little bit. Look around. It's easier than doing this. Look at the last one. You know? That doesn't happen. Number 17. Legislators, Benton and Benelli. Resolution authorizes the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County Amended Local Law Number 2 of 2010. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Bergman? Benelli? <coughs> Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Temnitz, Kulisek? O'Donnell, Paduke, Briskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 18. Legislators Benton and O'Donnell. Resolution pursuant to Real Property Tax Law, Section 1138, directing the cancellation of certain taxes which have been rendered unenforceable. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastalkis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Legislative Benton and Anagnostakis. Resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Finance for the County of Orange to make refunds or corrections of taxes in the amount of $2,500 or less. Second. Discussion. Bonasek, Turnbull, Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Briskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Fresh, 21 eyes. Number 20. Legislators Ikes and Kemnitz, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate second year budget period funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law at section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Legislative, uh, cool second, excuse me. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Padu? Briskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 21. Legislators, Ikes, Kemnitz, Benton, and Kulisek. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Thank you. Discussion? Roll call. Yes, Curly Adam. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Bergman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 
21 ayes. Yeah, number 22. Legislators Paduke and Fagione. Resolution pursuant to local law number 5 of 2015, <coughs> Ethics and Disclosure Law, Section 8, Paragraph A, Amending Appendix A, List of the positions of certain county officers and local political officials required to file a financial disclosure form by deleting the current list and adopting an amended list in its place. Second. Discussion. Vote <coughs> said Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amon? Yes. Nagastakis? <coughs> Benton? Berkman? Benelli? <coughs> Chiel? Dillard? DeSalvo? Egas, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Padoop, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau of Russia, 21 items. Amendment <coughs> 23. Legislative Terminal and Bet. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create maintenance mechanic supervisor and reclassify maintenance electrician to maintenance mechanic assistant supervisor at the Orange County Department of Public Works pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amon? Yes. Anastasakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulasek? <coughs> O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Fresh? 21 eyes. Okay, number 24. Legislators Benton and Cheney, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create assistant highway supervisor at the Orange County Department of Public Works, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Annette Stockis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? <coughs> Dicus? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Fresh, 21 eyes. Yeah, Legislative Turnbull, Fagione, Bonasekanikis. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish, create, reallocate, and reclassify various positions for the Orange County Department of Emergency Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Bonasek? Yes. At the cell phone, I'm sorry. You can yell at me too. But this is the last day. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> the last day I can yell at you. <laughs> the last day you can yell at me. No, it isn't. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo? Yes. Matasakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Baggio? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Padu? Skevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Fresh, 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we have one speaker signed up for public participation, Mary Ann McDonough. Now hold regarding Orange County Governor. Hi, I'm back here today because on December 7th at a legislative meeting at the 911 building, I was once again shut down by Chairman Brescia. The issues I was trying to discuss and come up with a solution for were the despicable behavior by the county executive during his campaign regarding anti-Semitism and the continuing bullying behavior by the legislative chair. What was the reason for not allowing me another minute or two to finish what I had to say? The reason was because he could. After this meeting, while at a church service, I was thinking about what happened to me and how the message I was trying to convey was thwarted because Steve Brescia did not like what I was saying. The next thought that came to me was, practice what you preach. And for that reason, I'm back here today to finish my speech. Steve Brescia would not let me complete on 12-7. You see, my ending message to the Democratic legislators and to the members of the public and to Orange County citizens as a whole was not to allow bullying and men who have power to shut us up. And yet, that's exactly what Steve Brescia was able to do. So I will finish my speech with my remaining time today, and in the future I will either speak, I will either write shorter speeches, speak more quickly, or have what I have to say uh, to put it on a number of other mediums if I can't speak it here. Steve Brescia might try to shut me up, but if I am encouraging others not to be shut up, but to, sh to show up and speak up, then that is the least I can do is lead by example. Very recently, President Obama said it most clearly when he said, you have to tend to this garden of democracy, otherwise things fall apart fairly quickly. So that is what I am here to do today, tending to the garden of democracy in Orange County, New York. 
You see, it's now up to us, us the people, some of them who are not in this audience today, but hopefully will be, because even though we're not elected, our voices still need to be heard. Elizabeth Warren once said, very recently on 1127, Trump thinks he can sh bully me and shut me up regarding his Pocahontas comment. I appeal to those of you who refuse to shut up, both that are here today and those that are going to be listening on the video, to show up and speak up. My plea is from Jesse Jackson. Don't ever quit. That's what they want you to do. If the fight is worth having, then stick around and fight. That is what we who love, cherish, live, work, and are part of the fabric of Orange County intend to do. Wish I had time to play the song by Matthew West, but the bottom line, he said, is don't stand still. We will not stand still. We will be here in 2018 doing something. To my fellow Orange County citizens, um, I want to ask them to listen to and heed the advice of William Faulkner when he said, never be afraid to raise your voice in, for honesty, truth, and compassion against injustice, lying, and greed. If people all over the world would do this, it would change the earth. All I'm looking to do is change Orange County. Thank you. Okay, I just want to say something for the record. For many years, when Chairman Schulmeyer <clears throat> was in the former center, and I've been here, uh, we've had a three minute time period for public participation. And I've usually, more, much more often than not, allowed a 15 second and sometimes a 30 second grace period. So some people don't think that that applies to them, but I, I do want to hear what the public has to say. But we do have a three, three minute time period. So thank you. Uh, with that said, uh, motion to uh, no, no. Okay. I just want to wish every, before you, gentlemen, speak, um, I want to hear from you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I would like to wish everybody a happy, healthy, safe holiday season. Um, Minority Leader Turnbull, then Legislator Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These morning meetings seem to go so well. Maybe we should do more morning meetings. Everybody giving credit where credit is due. Um, this legislature has worked really well together, <coughs> despite uh, some difficult issues. We've managed to move forward. Um, I just want to say something about uh, some of the lessons that I learned over the years. Uh, when I first became a legislator, in fact, when I was campaigning, I ran, I ran into a person, uh, I was a strong advocate for Keep It Valley View, and this person pointed out to me that uh, spending uh, $15 million on 300 people just doesn't make sense to him. And I thought about that, and I kind of adjusted my position that I would only continue to support Valley View if those deficit numbers went down as they did. So my support continued. The other issue was the Orange County Government Center. Um, having had been a builder for many years, it was, became my pet issue. I was, a, I was very focused on the Government Center. And initially my position was, let's just renovate the building, fix it, and move back in. We could do that for about $20 million. I remember a lot of people thought that was kind of an outrageous position. Again, while I was campaigning, I ran into some people who had worked in the government center and had expressed how they had gotten sick. And I realized that uh, I needed to adjust my position to a gut renovation, which I did. Here we are today in, in, in a wonderful result, obviously. Those that are going to be experiencing staying on are going to uh, have a much better environment to work in. We're, I think all legislators should be very, very proud of that. Uh, but I have to say that as I look back, the, the thing that uh, I'm most proud of is when I was able to intervene on the behalf of individuals, uh, constituents, and businesses in my district, there was a guy who called me up and said that his wife was driving down the road and they were tarring one half of the road and she came over a hill and she didn't know whether or not to stay in that side of the road and she went over into the tar side and uh, got tar all over the car and this guy was just outraged. There weren't enough flagmen on the road to make sure that she didn't do that. And initially the county resisted and paid for the damage and uh, eventually they did pay for it. Um, there was a bunch of homeowners up on the upper tier of my town that were opposed to a 
processing plant that was being considered in that district defeated that. Uh, and then there was a guy, <coughs> excuse me, who um, owns an auto repair shop, RJ Auto, who I've used many, many times, became friendly with over the years. And as I drove by his, uh, his business one day, I saw a fence around it, and I stopped by and asked him what was going on. He said the DEC was digging up an oil tank, and it was going to result in putting him out of business. I called the regional director, and uh, they were able to do the work in one day, and he was back in business. Um, so I think that uh, when we're able to actually do something for the people in our district, that's when uh, we really send the message you know, that government can work, government does work, you know. Um, and finally, I'd like to uh, tell uh, a little story about something that happened early uh, in my term as a legislator. Uh, I hope I don't embarrass legislator uh, Ben by telling the story I've told him before. He left. He left. He left. He left. He didn't want to tell <laughs> So indulge, man. You can indulge, man. <laughs> Well, maybe I won't tell you. No. So what happened was we were over at Hillhold facility uh, and we were on a tour and as we finished the tour we ended up by a fence in the area uh, where uh, uh, I was standing in one location and Lee Benton was standing about 20 feet away. Uh, and I looked and I saw this uh, goat and I said, wow, look at that goat. And uh, Legislator Ben said, that's not a goat, that's a cow. And we started arguing back and forth, and I said, listen, I might have been born in Brooklyn, but, uh, you know, they, they were books and they had pictures of goats, and that's a goat. Um, what had happened was that there was a large tree in the fenced in area, and uh, there was a cow and a goat. I couldn't see the cow, and the Ben couldn't see the goat. <laughs> So I've come up with a quote that I'm going to repeat. I, I don't know what this quote means, but it, you know, I've been thinking about it ever since. Sometimes we are not looking at the same thing differently. Perhaps we are looking at different things in the same way. Think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been thinking about this moment for quite some time. And first, I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for convening the legislature in this in this building and in this uh, this chamber. Uh, at least we had the opportunity to meet here together once, and I think that's uh, I appreciate it. And also the county executive who uh, made it happen as well. Right. So thanks. Uh, in fact, I owe. Uh, 20 years worth of thank yous and five terms worth, worth of thank yous. First, uh, I want to uh, set the record straight about Valley View. I was making some appreciative comments, but just for the record, it was the Democratic Caucus that, that saved the day, along with Mr. Nagno Stackis. Uh, so without being uh, divisive, I just want to hope that that issue is behind us and we can be unified, because Roseanne Sullivan, Bernie Chemnitz, Matt Turnbull and the, and the Democratic Caucus really uh, rallied to the occasion, and that might have been the most contentious issue of, of my five terms. Uh, but we can look forward to, to, to unity, I hope. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I want to thank the entire staff and, and workforce of county government. I, I, don't want to, I was going to say the department heads, but in fact, not department heads, but everyone, uh, everyone that, that serves the people of Orange County, uh, I want to say thank you to. And uh, I, want, I also want to say uh, in the future, since uh, before I say goodbye, uh, I hope people focus on saving and preserving our history and make that part of our your objective in the upcoming term. And part of that legacy is the Duchess Quarry Caves and also others. So um, we passed the baton on. I most of all I'm appreciative to the people of Middletown that elected me. And all of our seats are part of a public trust. And all of us are replaceable. We just hold on to our seat for a term in order to do the best we can to represent the people. So uh, 
rather than say goodbye, because it, it doesn't really feel like goodbye, I expect I'll be seeing a lot of you. It's more like, I'll see you later. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Melissa. I too just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I wasn't going to speak because I'm very emotional. You know, we made the right decision, but it wasn't easy to speak. And I just wanted to say truthfully, it has been an honor working with each one of you and, and really thanking the county employees and they are the front line. I mean, they really are the people that make us be able to do our job here when we meet together uh, for the good of the people. Um, and I also want to recognize the ladies in the office because not only were they preparing to get the agenda together for today, but to get this room ready for us to, to sit today for this session. You know, for some of us, our last time here, so I'm thrilled to be sitting here. But you worked very hard to get this room ready today for the help of a lot of other people. But I know I tried to talk to Jean yesterday, and she was very respectful, but I could tell she was very, like this, very rushed and crazy, so it would be ready for us. So I wanted to thank all the ladies um, for your hard work for today, but for the last 16 years, you know, some have come and gone, but working with each of you has made our jobs very easy. <laughs> so thank you. And I wish the new legislators the best of luck. Legislator just have a fault in the murder, I'm sorry. I guess it's time that we all, who are leaving, have something to say, and I, for, for a change, I'm, I'm really, I don't know the last four words, except I hear this Carol Burnett thing that said, I'm so glad we had this time together, these eight years, and we sung together, we cried together, we worked together, and for me, now it's time to say goodbye. Just let yourself. Uh, so I'll be brief. Um, I was good until Melissa started with the tears, and uh, got everybody emotional now. Uh, but it's been a great four years. It's been a fantastic four years. Uh, the reason why most of us legislators look so darn good is because of the office staff. Uh, you guys are fantastic. So uh, that was good. I'd like to thank the uh, chair, chairman and chairwoman of the committees I served on, uh, Mr. Hines from Public Safety, uh, Ms. Finelli for uh, Rules, and uh, Mr. Benton from uh, Ways and Means. Um, uh, again, thank all the county employees who do a fantastic job, uh, including my good friend, uh, Deputy Yellow, who's sitting behind me, part of the canine uh, unit. Uh, uh, and my only piece of advice if a 37-year-old uh, kid who's on the legislature can do that, uh, you know, not everything has to be so political. And uh, sometimes just uh, taking your glasses off, and uh, as my one of my favorite chairmen uh, says, uh, don't miss the forest through the trees, or don't miss the trees through the forest. I don't know. You the forest tell forest them. Yeah, forest <laughs> uh, you know, Take your glasses off and look at it. Do the right thing, because it's the right thing to do. So uh, good luck to you guys, God bless. Oh, and uh, I pass my uh, chairmanship of the Italian caucus uh, over to legislator Vero from Chester. <laughs> Were you the chairman? Was he the chairman? Self-appointed. Self-appointed. Self Curly, Roseanne, um, okay, I'll recognize you, people. So I just want to, uh, Jeff, Matt, Myrna, my fellow tugboat, uh, <laughs> Melissa, Jim, I want to wish you guys all the best in your future endeavors, really do. And, and I'll thank you for all your contributions to county government. Curly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to thank you for the assistance that you have given me in Memphis to the city of Newburgh. Um, each time I went to your staff, they indicate that you would have to give the approval, which I knew, and you came too. And I thank you again for that, uh, especially for Reverend Frank Jones. He was a mentor of mine, and I really appreciate you giving me the, giving the okay for the uh, resolution. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank my fellow legislators uh, for the assistance that you guys have given me well, since I have been here. I really appreciate it. And, uh, I will continue my fight for the city of Newburgh in some way, fashion, or form. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. We're adjourned. Yeah, let's get a real picture.